Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. This is a very exciting video for me to be finally making as I can now reveal my new project car, a 2001 Audi S3. <sighs> it feels good to say that. This has been a very long time coming. I have been impatiently waiting at times to get my hands on this car because I agreed to buy this car well over six months ago, but we hit a couple of delays either side and then of course Corona happened and we went into lockdown and I've not been able to collect the car any sooner than five days ago, which I know get the little violins out, but do you know what? I've been happy to wait. It's been worth it having the car for five days i've been thinking of reasons to just get out and go for little drives here and there whether it be to the shop it's such a great car to drive and of course i will be making a separate video where i bring you guys along on its first drive which to be fair will be its first proper drive because as i just mentioned i'm doing short journeys but even though short journeys have been great so i'll tell you what let me not waffle on let's jump outside I'll show you around the bodywork. It is quite windy outside, but we'll we'll make it work. And then we'll jump back inside. I'll show you around the interior. I'll explain briefly what I plan to do with the car, and then we'll wrap this up. So let's let's get out and have a look. Okay, guys. So here is the car. As I mentioned, it's in Imola yellow. Now this happens to be a very popular color when you Google S38L. However. I've been told it's rare and I know over the past 12 months of looking on Auto Trader, I haven't come across another yellow one so I'm just going to take that for what it is. Now another thing I mentioned was the alloys. I don't believe you could spec these. I'm pretty sure these are from a TT which would explain the name of them I guess. They are RSTT 18 inch. Each of the alloys is pretty much in this condition so you can see we've got pretty bad scuffs all around there's some chips the center caps are pretty much annihilated so i need all of these refurbed which i will be doing but apart from the wheels this side of the car is pretty decent this is the good side um just one thing to point out are the rear windows which i think is really cool they actually pop out i don't know i just think it's cool um all of the trim still on which kind of hints at where we're going with the other side but before we do, let's take a look at the front. Oh, actually, I did have to replace the two front tires, which I've done already when I collected the car. The tires that were on here, yeah, they were definitely on the limit. So I've got new tires on. It's got um, Goodyear F1s all round, Eagle F1s. They're not the super sports. These are asymmetric fives and the rear are asymmetric threes. If we head to the front, the front is pretty much in good condition. The only thing about the front is the front bumper and the bonnet need respraying. Res um, now I make that sound like it's a really small task, but what I'm referring to is there's no cracks or dents or anything like that. But what we do have, which hopefully you'll be able to see, is some really bad stone chipping. The bumper is pretty much peppered everywhere and the kind of front half of the bonnet is where it's worst so i'm going to get both of these resprayed i've already used a headlight restoration kit and they've come up okay actually i'm going to try again just to give it another go over i used a moderate kit which is the one without the drill i think if they don't come up any cleaner i will try and use the drill instead another thing i'm considering is the uh i don't know why i was pointing there another thing i was considering is the front grille do i keep this chrome grille or do i change it to a black grille i don't know metal press plate looks pretty cool both of the fog lights work again pretty cool i'll show you under the bonnet in a minute if we go around this side this is where things get a little trickier in terms of what needs doing so we have our only piece of visible rust, which is just here. Um, it's kind of starting to work its way up the wheel arch, so I'm gonna need to deal with that ASAP. And the door trim is missing. Now, fortunately, I do have the door trim. It fell off the other day whilst I was driving the car, so it's in the boot. And I need to refit it, but I've been trying to think of the best way to do that. So typically, well not typically, but when this car would have been delivered new, you can see that the, the trim was actually attached via these 
nut and bolts. There was three of them inside of the door. And this white plastic trim that you see here was stuck to the actual exterior trim. And then what you did was you slid it onto the door and then you'd screw it in. But what people do is they remove these bolts because they can corrode and cause rust with inside the door. So the previous owner has done that and they've decided to glue this plastic to the door and then glue the trim over the plastic, which I think did the job, but over the years it's began to crumble away. And when I collected the car, the trim was coming off up that end. And for whatever reason, I guess the vibration, etc., has just caused it to completely fill off, fall off, sorry. So I need to get that sorted because it's kind of messing with the whole look of the car and it makes it look like a bit of a heap. So I'm going to be getting on that ASAP. The other thing to point out is our only dent, which is just here. You can see it's kind of a very small dent. It looks like a stone or something has hit that pretty hard. But considering that is the only dent, that kind of gives you an overall idea of the, the condition of the car, considering it's nearly 20 years old. Before we head up the back, the other thing is the sunroof. Now, I believe these were optional. Don't quote me, but I just don't remember seeing many other S3s of this age with sunroofs. I might just be forgetting, but this one has it. It's electric, which is pretty cool, and it works, kind of. So it opens fine, but the only problem is it closes halfway. And the other day I was messing around with a key because I wanted to know if you held down the unlock button and lock button, do the windows go up, down respectively, which they do. But in testing that, the sunroof opened and it was a bit of a panic. I closed it manually using the Allen key socket inside the roof but I was being a little impatient and I wanted to get it closed quickly so I used a socket and or a wrench and uh, I would think I was a little too aggressive because I nearly rounded the screw and it was a real bum clenchy moment because I thought the sunroof was going to get stuck open fortunately it's closed I'm not going to be opening it again opening it again until I have a replacement nut and I can look at the motor to see why it's not closing the whole way. I have already used some lubricant spray on the rails of the sunroof to see if that would work. It hasn't really made much of a difference. So let's have a look at the back. I think the back is possibly my favorite angle of the car. I just love the way that these are kind of squatted down and are a bit fat at the back. They've got a bit of a fat booty vibe going. I replaced the metal plate because it came with the car. It had the original plastic uh, rear view plate. Rear view plate. It had the original plastic plate on the car, um, which was a bit of a pain to get off because the screws had eroded and I couldn't even get a flat head in there to turn them. So I had to get a little creative, but I think it looks better like this. It does have rear parking sensors, but they don't work. You put the car in reverse and it makes a noise as if it's going to reassure you that you're getting closer to an object, but it doesn't, which I nearly learned the hard way because I almost reversed straight into my RS3. No real issue aside from the parking sensors up the back here. At the moment, it has a standard back box, standard system. I am considering changing that to a Miltech. If you have any other recommendations for different exhausts that work well with these engines, please do comment below. Miltech just happens to be one that I know is popular. And the only other thing is the rear window. So the rear window, not only does it have this kind of like tinted film inside that started to come away at different areas, so I need to peel that off. It's actually the seal outside that I also want to try and work on because it's crumbling away and I was jet washing the car the other day and loads of it just flew out all over the floor. So I'm either going to try and reseal it or have the windows retrimmed. If you know anyone that could do that, again, let me know. Parcel shelf is missing at the moment because it has a piece of wood in it that was for the parcel shelf speakers that did not come with the car, but the wood was rattling. It was annoying me, so I took it out. But I think that looks pretty good up the back. Now, I just mentioned I jet washed the car. 
I will include some footage now. If I don't have footage, I'll show some pictures now of what this car looked like when I collected it. It was a complete state. And the reason for that is because for the past nine months, I wanna say, maybe longer, possibly a year, this car has been sat in the same place in a workshop, just collecting all sorts of mold, grime, dirt, and leaves. It desperately needed some attention. And it wasn't just on the outside, it was also on the inside. So let's jump in, take a look at the interior. Okay, so hopefully the camera will pick this up, but what you should be able to see here, hopefully, is some white sporing. And if you can't see it there, you can definitely see it here, which reminds me, I need to clean that ASAP. Imagine that everywhere. It was everywhere. Both the front seats were covered, the back seats were covered, the steering wheel, you get the idea, it was everywhere. Now, of course, I have given the interior a once over because I wanted to be able to drive the car, but it was bad. It was really bad. But having given it a bit of a clean up, I've hoovered all under the chairs, took these out, hoovered, etc. Both the front seats aren't in bad condition. Of course, there is some creasing, but again, considering they're 20 years old, not bad. The back seats are basically new. It doesn't look as though they've been used much. And if we jump in, let me get the key out. This is the interior. Get rid of that. The cup holder still works, which is pretty cool, but I'm gonna put that back in. Let me just put the coffee down there a minute. If we put that back in, because what I wanna show you is the head unit. Now, the reason I wanna show you this is because this take literally takes me back to being 17, 18 years old, going on the Bass Junkies website and specking out the audio of a car that I didn't own. This thing is very cool. It was 1,100 pounds new. And I know that because I have the receipt for it. It comes with sat nav, Bluetooth, as you can see. We've got a double DIN unit down here. Both front seats are heated and they work, which is pretty cool. The aircon is perfect, it does the job, gets nice and cold in here. We do have the option to turn the ESP off, which again, is pretty cool. I haven't done it yet. I don't think it will make that much of a difference, but the glove box is quite scratched, which is a little annoying. I've tried cleaning this twice. I'm gonna give it one more try, and if not, I may look to replace this, but the glove box is pretty decent in there. Um, we've got black uh, piano kind of trim at various points in the car. It also has the original Bose speakers. So although the head unit's been changed, the speakers are standard. It also has the original Bose subwoofer in the boot, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I, I can't think of anything else to show you. I do have an armrest actually, uh, if I can get that to work. So we've got an armrest here. I've put two air fresheners in because, you know, mold, it smells. But apart from that, it's great in here. Okay guys, so this is the project car. I'm so happy to finally have it. One thing I missed was explaining where this came from. So the guys who look after my RS3, the owner of that garage, it was his car and he was using it for almost 10 years as a daily car. And about six months ago, we began having discussions around me buying the car. And then of course things happened and it meant I was only able to collect it, like I said, five days ago. So I'm really happy to have it. My immediate plans for this car are to get it back to its original state as much as possible. But who knows, you know, things change, you have an idea and then you'll have another. For the time being, I wanna get that trim back on and I just wanna get the bodywork in good condition and then go from there. But I'm gonna bring you along on the journey. I'm gonna try my absolute best to do as much of the work I can myself. What I don't know how to do, I'm gonna learn how to do because what I didn't want to do when setting out on this journey was to just ferry the car around to different garages of course i know there is value in doing that but for me i wanted to kind of learn something new and kind of treat this as a process so you'll be coming along on that journey with me i'll probably mess up quite a bit but that's all part of it right 
But that's gonna be it guys. It's just an intro for now. As I mentioned, the next video covering this car will be its first drive and we're gonna go somewhere. I don't know where, but with lockdown being eased up imminently, I think we might be able to go on a bit of a longer journey. Maybe go to a really good driving road somewhere and just see what this car is about. If you know of any, again, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the car, if you own one, and if there's anything that I need to be aware of that I should change ahead of time, again, in the comments down below. Please do like this video, it really helps. And if you're not subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with this project. And until the next video, guys, have a great week. Peace.